line in. Real tech audio. Line in. That's it. Okay. And now there we, we have audio. Now we have audio. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, it's a new thing. It's a new thing we learn every time yes. we do a new thing. Well, <laughs> we do a setup, and I only have to do it the first time we set up a new show, and then I forget that I have to do that again because the lines are bouncing. So, hi, people. You didn't hear anything we were saying. Um, we're doing a show, yeah. and we're this is an experiment to see if it's interesting to watch people paint minis. Yes. Well, no, no, no. It's never interesting <laughs> to watch people paint minis. It is sometimes. No, no, I it is not. It, I watch that on Twitch. It's one of the few things I actually watch people do on Twitch is paint minis and then cosplay stuff. But could it be interesting if people were bullshitting talking. Or talking yeah. while they're doing it? About yeah. something interesting while they were doing it. Right. And that's possible. Yeah. Maybe. So this is our experiment tonight. This is why it wasn't on the schedule. We just kind of were like, hey, we could try a thing. Right. It took us a little while to figure out, like, with the camera set up and stuff like that, how it would possibly look. And we might still change it, but... So, but the question I have is, what are you painting minis for? That uh, was what I was in the middle of describing with absolutely no sound a few seconds ago. Although, the lip readers in the audience, they got it. They, they, they know were, it. They're right there they with They know us. what it's about. Perfect for them. <laughs> Um, I, I hate these fucking yeah. things. I really do. I, so, um, why did I get involved in this fucking hobby? Because <laughs> it's awesome. So I'm painting um, my mini for our D&D 5e campaign, which is you can watch on Sunday nights called Desert of Despair. So I'm an elf druid. So this is my mini. If you weren't here a second ago when I showed her. She's totally primed black paint. So there's not like a lot of interesting things to see right now. Um, I prefer to prime with black paint just because it's a little bit more forgiving. Um... And it, it, you can add more, it's easier to add light colors than, uh, without making mistakes, for me at least, than to add dark colors in crevices I do later. have to say, it makes it damn hard to see details. Does it? Yep. I think that's because you're old. Uh, yeah. That is, that may be that, because that I'm old. That is entirely a possibility. <laughs> and that <laughs> is entirely why I prime white and then wash, wash them over with black to bring up the details. Ah, uh, I see. So, I did. I I, I primed these black because you said, "Oh, you're supposed to prime black." I'm like, "Okay, I'll prime black," and I, like I can't that. see a fucking thing. That's what I was told to prime <laughs> prime black. Well, um, one of the reasons you might want to prime Not black. Not right in front of the mic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whap, 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 whap. This is our experiment. This is Good. the first and, time. And, when, and if I wasn't watching you and knowing what you were doing, you think it, it was sounded very off. different. <laughs> 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 So uh, why don't we go around the table before we start giving advice? Sure. And uh, so, Sue, where do you work? I don't at? give advice about painting shit. No. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you own the studio, and you have like five billion things to paint, so... I do. I'm painting a British mechanized infantry unit for Team Yankee, and they're these little, little fuckers right here. You can see, see this little guy? Yeah, he's very... See they're him? Like, Look yeah. at that! Look at that little tiny little bastard right there. And just to for here for for comparison, this is a regular D and D mini next to his mini. A little tiny guy. So they're like quarter yeah. size, like they're super yes. small. Well, the t they're and I think they're actually a slightly larger scale than the tanks are. Are they? I well, think the tanks it would be are impossible to paint them if they were actual scale size to the tanks. Yeah, the tanks are like. I yeah, mean, they would be like this big. T seventy two is like that long. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're they're a bigger scale. I think so. Than than the tanks are, which doesn't matter because they're an infantry. You know, right. They're not. They're, well, they 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 can I guess climb on tanks. I suppose. I think there's rules for that. But this is that this is that miniature game that Zachary and I played at the last game convention we went mm. to, and it was great fun. And I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and get into it. And next thing you know, I've got five or six boxes of miniatures I have to paint. <laughs> And the painting the tanks is fine. I mean, the uh, the the Russian stuff is the easiest because everything they have is green. It's like it's like Stalin went not Stalin. Who would it have been in the that would have been like uh, oh I don't know, I think it would have been Gorbachev yet. It probably would have been Chernyenko or Andropov, one of those guys. Totally. Probably owned a factory that produced olive drab paint or green paint. And said, "We will paint everything." He with. didn't own anything. The people own everything. Well, I don't think that is quite exactly the way things actually ended up working. <laughs> 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 but uh, it's a pain in the ass to paint these little fuckers. 
Yeah. It is. It looks like it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got the first stage of painting done. There's six stages. Yeah. And, I, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six done, and I probably have another 25 or 30 left. Wow. For the first stage, which is mm -hmm. just the green. After the green, then I have to do a wash, mm -hmm. and then I have to do Maverick Khaki, and then it, DPM Sand. No, oh, it comes with like an instruction manual. Well, no, it, well, this is the rule book for the British units. Mm -hmm. It's called Iron Maiden. Oh. Oh, yeah. Iron Maiden? Excellent! Right. <laughs> and uh, it has in the instructions. There's I would a have gotten that. Thank you for that. There's a little British dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the British. And then it says, here's your, for the camouflage uniforms, here's your phases for camouflage uniforms. And then the webbing stuff is done differently. So you're actually breaking the rules if you paint it differently? Well, no, they're telling you this is the best way to do it to get the best results. Oh, I see. Okay. Like, do it in this order. Because you paint. You paint all their clothes green, mm -hmm. and then you put little strips of the other colors that make up the, the camouflage mm -hmm. in it. But, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm watching the chat. What do you mean? <laughs> Soviet Oblad of Armor Infantry. 15 millimeter? No, I think they're 25... No. What the fuck I think are they are 15. 100? 100? No. No, they're not 100. I don't know. Oh, let me see if it says. It might say in the front of the book. I don't remember. No, it's it's one to one hundred. So what, whatever, is it, it might be fifteen millimeter. I don't know, but whatever one to one hundred is. Mm -hmm. And what are you working on, Jeff? Uh, I am painting miniatures for uh, Rob and Gina and myself for uh, Jason's D and D game. Ah. So they will go along with the one that you're doing. Excellent. Um. We have, let's see, can you see here? We have Gina's Sorceress. Nope, up higher. There, okay, back. And back. You can there. see it right here. Ah, there it's one I needed. Nice. And um, if you look at her left hand, the one that's raised, um, I have done a little bit of sculpting to create uh, the, the look of, of a fire spell that she's in the middle of casting. And then we have... Rob's. What's looking at Kimmy now? Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, we have Rob's Lizard Man, or not Lizard Man, but uh, Dragonborn Dragon Paladin. And this was the best cleric I happened to have. Where are you? There you are. This was the best cleric I happened to have in my box for. For my cleric, so no, were those are those metal figures or are those plastic? Uh, these are metal. Uh, they are they're all made by Reaper Miniatures. Um, I forget which one the the Dragonborn Warrior is. I forget what his, what the name of his name is. Um, but you know, well, we will see how we how they come out. Yeah. A dry brush will bring out the edges of things. I'll try that on the next dude. That's S.B. Lloyd suggesting that I dry brush with a little gray. Yeah, that'll show the... But that's adding one more step to an already multi-step process. Yeah, that's... Uh... I, I'm almost to the point where I'm just saying, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to dip these fuckers just spray paint. in green. That would, See, that would be my thing. Is that, like, I'd line them all up and spray paint them like a base color and then go from there. Well, I did... For the Americans, mm -hmm. I bought a can of... Yankee green or whatever mm -hmm. color they call it, which is the, the all the tanks are that and the uniforms are that, and then from that you you add other stuff on top of it. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I, when I get to the American ones, which I still have a, a, an entire tank platoon plus um, at least this many mobile infantry units mm -hmm. and anti aircraft units and two helicopters. To do, wow. to do for the Americans. So all that stuff is going to get a nice, even coat of green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Zachary, guess what? We're done. Yeah, ta-da. <laughs> Has he helped you paint them? You should have him paint them. Um, he tried to help me paint them, and he got frustrated because he wanted to paint the hind helicopters. Mm -hmm. And he broke a, um, Aww. Um, a rotor blade. And he's like, I give up. I broke a rotor blade. I'm like, Zachary, I can glue this back together. It's just made of plastic. I don't care. I'm not even doing it. I hate it forever. Yeah. Yeah. 
He just barely turned 10. That's a little young for... Yeah. Although he he enjoyed... We sat down and painted minis. Allie's actually getting pretty good at it. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah they had a good time doing that at the last con. Yes. Yeah, they had a, they had a blast. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and she got a lot better from the one she made at the con, which was basically layer upon layer upon layer of paint. Yeah. Um, until it, the figure was unrecognizable. Mm-hmm. Uh, to like the, by the time her third mini was like uh, that's about as good as I could paint a mini. <laughs> it takes a little while to like figure out this stuff. Yeah, she did though, and then she looked at other people, what other people were doing, and how they were doing it, mm -hmm. and kind of picked up some of that stuff. Nice. Yeah, she definitely has an artistic bent that I don't have. That's shocking. Yeah, because neither me nor her mother have any artistic ability whatsoever. No, of course not. That was sarcasm, by the way. No, I don't. What, what art? No, I have no zero artistic ability. I'm talking about art, like traditional artistic, oh. like art. Well, Heather stuff. does. No, not at all. Really? Like no. drawing? No. She paints. Stuff oh no, like crazy. Heather can't draw. Well, I don't know if she can draw, but she can paint like crazy. No. Yeah, she painted the ant guy. Check it. Ed. She traced it. Oh. Well. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but you, if you if you were to say uh, here, draw a picture of this, no, no, no. she definitely it, it, can't do that. It will look like it was done by a two year old monkey, right? <laughs> Which is about what I my my level of drawing. Allie, on the other hand, can like really draw. Yeah, but painting miniatures isn't drawing because I can't draw either. It's kind That's of true. It's more of a craft than an art. It's more like coloring book than cut than drawing. Yeah. What happened? Oh, there it is. Rob says music is art. Music is, no, no, music is music. That's why they call it music, and that's why they call it art art. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to the everything is art thing at all. That's shocking. That, that was not something. No. Yeah. I do not believe that everything is art. Well, there's, like, the performing arts, and then there's, like, the fine arts, and those are different things. Right, but I mean, there's a lot of things that just aren't art. I don't think. <laughs> I think art art is art is a fusion of creativity and skill, mm -hmm. and I and I think it actually requires both. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And music already has a name for it, so you, I would not call music art because music is music. It's already got a perfectly good name. <laughs> why, why rename? Why it? It has a perfectly good name? Why dilute? Why dilute the 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 meaning of the word art by calling other things that aren't art, art. Rob. <laughs> Rob's like, when arts are cut in school, that music goes away. Because <laughs> right right, laughing P. is not super... Because no, right along with P.E. <laughs> what? Because right along with P.E. Modern art is art, yes. Iryoku Hikari, I would say, it, it, if if the creation of it required skill, I think it. I think I would consider it art. It depends what it is. He suddenly is like, wait, no, that would still include music. Wait. No, but, but I mean, if you want to call music a subset of art, I suppose you could. But music is music. That's why they. That's why we have the word music. Yes. That's I why they don't. That. That's why they don't say sound art. Yeah. <laughs> it has its own word. Or face mics. Or face mics. <laughs> well, face mics is a really good term. It is really good. <laughs> Helps keep everything straight. It does. Mm. No, but art is art. Art is visual. Rob is arguing. Art He's is visual. really good about doing that. But then it would be visual. Alright, so I have to be careful painting her midriff so I don't fill her belly button with paint so it, like, stops being there. We can always just get a pen and make another divot. That's true. Or maybe she wasn't birthed. Maybe <laughs> she wasn't birthed. Maybe she's like she's Adam and Eve. Magical elf. 
Oh, could be. Created could from be. the very fabric. Dug, of the... dug out of the, the, the roots of trees. There you go. See, I think, yes, I think art implies a visual medium. To me, that... That makes when sense. When you take art class, do they teach you how to play clarinet? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Did someone just make that argument for you in the chat? No, I, I just made that argument. Oh. That's for Rob. <laughs> No, this is totally what Hiroku Hikari said. You totally jacked his argument. What are you talking about? No, he said art implies a visual medium. Yeah, and I'm saying, did you say that, or did someone in the chat room say that? No, for he you? said that, but oh. th that's that's when I added the. Ah, oh, I see. But uh, but then why do they call m musical artists? I don't call them musical artists. I call them musicians. I've never heard the term musical artists. They, they call them artists. Is that the correct term for Kanye? Musical artist? No. Because he claims to be the greatest musical artist of his age. Of course he does. He, well, he very well might be. Really? But he's not a, the greatest musician. Oh, <laughs> see, now he, that makes sense. He can be the, yeah, yeah, yes, he is the greatest musical artist there is. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can, he can have that title, <laughs> since I don't think that title means anything. <laughs> does photography count as art? Visual, yeah. Yes. Although, Hi, Dale from kind of, kind of. Really? I, th I think so. I, I would think say so. absolutely. I mean, it is, it is, but you don't call him, you don't call him an artist. You don't say a photographic artist. You say a photographer. Right, but it's still like a visual. Like you absolutely. Take, you and there is creativity. and Yeah, it, it is. A, it, yeah, I would say maybe. I don't know. See, when I think of art, I think of like, Painting and drawing and stuff like that. Right, but if you were to take an art class in college... That's what they would teach you. Right, but I mean, like, photography is part of the art department. Okay, yes. Is, Unless it, they have, it, like, an AV department, I guess. Which they, they very which well they might. Probably might. But I still, I think that would still be not be photography. I still feel like if you had an AV or technology department and then an arts department, I feel like photography would be more likely to be in the arts department than the AV. Right. So. Well, mm, I don't know. I don't know where... I, I did, did not know anyone who majored in photography. I don't know if they offered photography as a major. There was an RTV department, mm -hmm. and that's probably where they would have put it, mm -hmm. if, they, if, if there was such a thing. Um, photography was under the art department where I went to college. Oh, it was? Yeah. Did they have an R, uh, RTV department? Like Radio film TV? Film and... I know they did it at Fullerton, but photography was still part of the, the art department. Probably, but this was in Upper East Tennessee, and they may have just discovered television at that point. <laughs> yeah, we got a wire in last week. We got two channels. <laughs> um, a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Yeah. At, at CSUOB, it looks like it is in the art department at CSUOB. Okay. And since that's where I went, that is the authority on where things <laughs> on go. this on all th on all subjects. <laughs> that makes School of Art sense. Photography Department. There you go. All right. The photography program in the School of Art. So yes. But I think it would be a lesser art than actually making art because you're not drawing anything. You you're 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 framing and you're composing a picture which certainly takes talent absolutely but it's not the same as someone drawing something because i can take a picture of someone standing there i can't draw a picture of someone standing there. true although with well, all i can the, but it won't look anything like the photograph although with all the photoshop and stuff now i still couldn't do it i know but i'm saying that there's a lot of drawing you know, involved for yeah. in, that can be involved in photography, not necessarily has to be. But that's can be. Tr that's true, yeah. Which is usually why people with art degrees end up doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because it needs that skill set. Yeah, we yeah fine arts photography. That's apparently where where you put photography. See, I just when I bought a camera, I just read the manual. That's what Gar told me to do. Yeah. He said just read the book. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. And I'm like, really? And I opened the book. I'm like. Holy yeah, shit, it does. It, does. Yeah. it explains what f-stop means and mm -hmm. what depth of focus is and all those things. <laughs> like you just saved yourself 
But I consider film art. Well, if you consider photography art, you would, I think you would consider film art, wouldn't you? I, I don't know, though. See, if that, you get to the certain point where it's not art, it's management. Yeah, I... You know what I mean? Yeah, but also, but... Is a film director an artist? Or is he just a really good manager? I think it depends. Like, I feel like a, a major motion picture director is probably not an artist, but I feel like the person, the cinematographer is an artist. Sure, absolutely. I'd agree with that. So yes. I think then, like, you go from, okay, if you're in a little independent film where the director's also acting as the cameraman, then yeah. But... What would Sam say? He would say it is. <laughs> Sam is on a level where he's running the camera a lot still, so I would say that that my second answer <laughs> made that a little bit of a safe answer. But, but he's also, I mean, I mean, I guess when you're a director too, you're like, you're directing the vision, so you might not be the one making the costumes, if, if but you're you the one. one. It's true, <laughs> depending on the movie, I suppose. Right. Oh my God! So I finally watched Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Did you like it? It is a terrible movie. Oh, you didn't like it? I oh, liked it. It's awful in every every sense. It's terrible. I and liked I know it. I'm like I but, enjoyed it. Okay, there's okay. I'm just gonna go off because I was a little upset because I was like really excited to watch it. Okay, there's no character arcs. Not a single character has any character no. arc. No. Uh, no, the kid with the weird haircut. Kinda. A, no. little, a little bit. You just don't really know exactly what's there's going no on. There's no character arc. He has weird fantastic beasts and he's awkward and then at the end. No, he no, has, no, 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 the guy with the weird haircut. Not not him. The weird guy with the briefcase? No. No, the kid with the weird haircut. Oh, oh, the, oh. With a bowl cut. Yeah. He kind of has an arc, but you don't even really know his name. You, you don't really know him <laughs> at all. The Fantastic Beasts could have been pulled completely out of the movie, and it would not have affected they, the they, plot. Yeah, th that's true. Yeah, they were like... <laughs> although I don't think that's what it was about. It wasn't. But you're also like, okay. See, like, I, I think what they're setting up is a, is a meta story. Because mm -hmm. it, it's supposed to end up... It, it's supposed to... I have a feeling it's going to be more about Grendelwald. Yeah. Because it's it's one of a series. Oh, it is? Oh, I, I believe it's supposed to be one of a series. Okay. That's what I've heard. I don't okay, know if that's so they, true. Okay, so they wasted the first one. Then, then, okay. Or it's, a, or it's a slow burn setup. Maybe. I don't know. I just they did. I mean, they, they certainly... There were no story... There were no character arcs. There was certainly a lot of character establishment. Yeah. Kind of. Oh, no. I, you know, uh, there's a lot of it. Come on. Yeah... Those you know, I mean, the whole thing, though, I felt like... Those characters were painted in very very broad brush strokes. Yes. But that, and I think that was one of the things that annoyed me, too. They, other than Queenie, the girl, the cute girl, none of them felt like they were from, like, the Harry Potter universe. Well, it's in America. Right. And I, the whole time I'm sitting there going, I don't think J.K. Rowling likes America. Cause I don't, did she have anything to do with it? She wrote it. Did she really write it, or know. did she like but it says, manage write it? It said written by J.K. Rowling on the credits. I don't know if that how much like how Stephen King writes, right? But it was like literally the whole time, like all they do is like, oh, for no match. That's the stupidest term I've ever heard. That's so lame. It's oh like, yes, just call them Muggles. Like just to have it be a universal thing. But I, no, but Muggles sounds intrinsically British, right? But come up with some. Think it about needs it for to be more something than five minutes. Really insulting because it's America, right? Or something. <laughs> Nobody just seems lame. And then it's like, there's, a, and, and you're sort of hoping, like, I, sorry, spoilers, but whatever. But, like, you're sort of hoping, okay, like, they talk about, well, you are so backwards in America about your magic laws. Like, in, in England, we call them muggles. Oh, and you have backwards laws about them. You can't marry them. You can't even, da, da, da. and it's just like, re, and he, like, insults us. And then, so you're like, okay, through the movie, you're like, okay, maybe that's what it will change. Like, this story will make us grow as Americans. And, like, no, no she doesn't changes. like. No, she doesn't, no, she doesn't like America. I know. And you can tell. Because, like, even their magical places are super unmagical. You're just like, oh. No, oh, that's completely uninspiring. Yeah. I don't know. I was, I was, I was let down. I was, I was hoping for, even if, I wanted it to be a different flavor than the English wizards. But it was just not magical in any way. What, what they need to do is get off the fucking East Coast and go to the rest of America where it's... Or something. Not as... Dingy and gross. Or even if it had been, because I mean, it's the twenties. Like in, I mean, twenties, like the magic you could do in like twenties America, about, like how, all how amazing about, Art Deco magic everywhere. How about setting it somewhere in the West, and and instead of having a magical college, you've got like Native American, a a, a Native American tradition of magic, yeah, which is entirely different. Right. I mean, like anything would have been. I don't know. 
I agree the beasts were, were irrelevant. Yes. Um, bye, Rob. Thanks for hanging out. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, can they afford a slow burn is one of the things. Ryoko well, I mean, if that's what they're doing, that's ballsy because yeah. it's for a movie with millions and millions of dollars spent on right? it. Right? Well, and that's the other thing, too. It's like, But people are starting to get, uh, well, I don't know. In the age of binge watching, they're doing it a lot now. Look yeah. at all the uh, half the Marvel things that were on Netflix. If that came out weekly, every one of those shows would have been canceled. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> because, but you can just say, "Okay, I'll keep watching." It hasn't really engaged me yet, but I'll keep watching anyway. And you just will because you know it says Marvel on it, and you're figuring at some point it's going to get good, and, and it usually does. I feel like Jessica Jones. I don't. I, I feel like I would have waited weekly for that one. R- yes. Well, that's. May probably because that's something that ne- in in an earlier age of television, mm-hmm. that's something that never would have had a chance to get made. No, no, one hundred percent no. But yeah, I mean, I've watched all the other Marvel shows. I have not. I've pretty much stopped watching superhero shit because it's boring <laughs> the fuck out of me. Yeah, um, I don't like. I just the last superhero thing I watched that I liked was Ant Man, and I thought Ant Man was really fucking funny. It was very funny. And but after Ant Man. Mm. I haven't had like there's, I've seen nothing that I've liked. Yeah. See, I didn't care for Ant Man. Oh, really? It, I, I th- it made me laugh. It was lighthearted. Now I didn't watch all of it. I only caught part of it. Yeah, there were funny parts of it. I thought. I mean, there were some issues I had with like, like there was absolutely no reason why it shouldn't have been the Wasp instead. Like the fact that I don't know what the wasp is. The wasp is the other is the girl is his. The, they kind of the the girl who trained him. Oh, okay. Hank's daughter. Mm-hmm. Like it was one of those things where okay, there's a wasp suit. Oh, we're teasing you this, and she's gonna train this dude and everything she already knows. It's like if she already knows all this stuff and there's a suit for her, like the flimsy excuse of well, her dad's trying to protect her just seems stupid. It's like all right, they're literally trying to protect the super secret formula. Why not just send the most qualified person, even if she has a vagina? Who's related to you and, yeah. and and probably won't spoil the secret anyway. You don't have to risk it on an unknown. Right, on this unknown criminal dude. It's right. like, this, none of that made sense to me. Like, but, the just, unknown, the, that, but the unknown criminal dude made it a very interesting story. Yeah, no, he was hilarious. But it was just one of those things where I was just like, this could also be a really interesting story about her just being badass instead of her... No, having, that's a boring story. No. Someone just being badass is... Every fucking uh, Avengers film. Well, it could have been her. And, and those stories are boring. Yeah. Well, they get they are, they are now because we've had a lot of them. But I mean, it could have been like, oh, this is me secretly training behind my dad's back and then becoming a hero. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, there yeah. could have been a lot of ways to do that or that weren't here. Let's you know do the Trinity thing where there's a really badass character who trains the dude to be best, and then it just I don't know it annoys me. Well, that, but it was Ant Man. They they pitched Ant Man, and that's the one they got the green light on. They didn't get green light on Wasp. I know, even <clears> though <throat> she was one of the original Avengers. I don't know any of that stuff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the people in the chat room were talking about um, J.K. Rowling's take on Native American magic, which is getting a lot of. Well, it, it's kind of gone quiet now, but when it first started being talked about, it was getting quite a lot of blowback. Oh, was she? Because her new book is t- is. There's a lot of, uh, she's kind of incorporated Native American ideas into it, but uh-huh. in a very kind of insulting way. Well, Native Americans get very grumpy about having their their, their stuff appropriated. Right. Well, yeah. And it's There's their a- act of religion. So the fact that she's like, oh, it's magical, fake, like all these other fake things I've come up with, they're a little grumpy about that. Well, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, um, it, it's still a religion. Yes. And, and people have a right to not believe in it. Right. And to uh, think it's fake. Right, totally. <laughs> but I mean, I, classifying it in the same place as people with a legit, just made up stuff, that's a little. It's all. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, as non-religious people, it all seems very similar in the same kind of vein. Yes. But when it's like an active part of like your culture. Sure. But I mean, a lot of things can be an active part of your culture at some point. True. I mean, 
in in a hundred years, Scientology may be become a, a a religion that it it's no longer okay to make fun of. Yeah. Because pretty much all it takes for a religion to not be made fun of is, super is time. Yeah. It just takes time. If, if it's long enough where no one remembers the guy that made it up, then it's okay. It now it's suddenly sacred. Uh, <clears throat> not that I'm saying Scientology should be. <laughs> no. <laughs> they will. They, I think in a hundred years they could probably own most of California. I think that's my bet. Nope, I don't think that's going to happen. There's enough so? people. No. No, they've already, they got they got they got pretty much kicked out of uh, Glendale. Don't they still own their real estate there, though, legally? Mm, they might own some of it, but they tried to take over the city council, and they had a, they had some problems. Oh. Trying to do that. <clears throat> some problems that it, it caused them to try another state. Which oh, is wow. Which when is when they moved and decided that Clearwater, Florida would be the place to be. Hmm, interesting. Yep. They just bought that giant building over by my house. Well, you, you've seen the one in Pasadena they got, right? Yeah, and the ones down in L.A. They own, like, a big chunk on Sunset. It's, yeah. like, huge how much they own. And a bunch of the buildings that are nondescript, too. The only way you know is, like, the weird people standing out front, like... Okay, weird people and the standing out in front. How does that identify anything in L.A.? And the butcher paper over all the yeah, windows. <laughs> the butcher paper, and they're usually in, like, suits. So it's, like, they, like, want to be, like, like... Special agents, men in black, standing outside these weird buildings. You're just like, oh. And they look at you funny if you slow down and look at them. Uh, well, I, that would be an enticement to me right there. <laughs> well, I kind of did that on my They call break. that smiling, Kimmy. Oh, When sorry. you say they look at you funny, they're sm just smiling. No, they're not smiling. Just not used to seeing that. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's L.A. Usually they're yelling rude things. Well... In the South, if a woman smiles at you, she's plotting your demise. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> oh. See, we're not that different here. Alrighty. It would have been amazing. Um, Sam and I were talking about it after going back to Fantastic Beasts because I'm annoyed by it. Um, to go at it like a noir film. Uh -huh. And go at it from the girl's point of view, like this, oh, this disgraced R who's, like, trying to fight back and, like, break this case to, like, that would have been a very American feeling film. Oh, you know what? That would have been fantastic. Yeah. But, but British people wouldn't make that movie. No, no, they wouldn't. But that would have been awesome. Because that, that's validating Amer America has culture. Right. <laughs> or or have it like the have it be from the muggle's point of view, because, like, we didn't get to, dis I think that was a cool thing about Harry Potter uh, the books and the movies is you kind of discover all the magic with him as he's going into it. Right. And if we'd been instead of following um, the I forget his name the the Fantastic Beasts dude around, if we'd followed the Muggle into it and like discovered magic with him, and suddenly there's this beautiful girl, and oh my god, they made the best dinner ever. Like I think that would have been at least a better portal for the audience. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Although I I don't know that 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 trope. I think people would have complained about, oh, they're using the same 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 trope they use to explain everything again. Because that's used a lot. Yeah, but it, we needed more things explained. There was a lot <laughs> happening that, like, like literally, what was his name? Gringle? Gringot? Whatever his name? The bad guy. I don't know, whatever his name. Grendelwald. 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 That is, thank you. Like, he's from the books. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, literally. I don't even know if he's even mentioned in the films. Is he? I think he's, like, in one scene they talk about. Oh, like, he's, like, in a prison or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he finds out where the wand is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, literally, like, if unless you're, like, a Harry Potter, like, fan. Which you wouldn't I, even have known it was him. Right. And right. you don't know why it's a big deal, the reveal at the end. Like, Sam had read the books, but, like, years ago. So, like, spoiler. When it, <laughs> when it turns out to be, like, him at the end, like, he literally was, like, what? What? Was he the guy from the newspaper at the beginning? Like, because there's literally like one shot during the credit scenes. Right. He's like, why? Why do we care? Why? Why do we? Why do we care about that? It's very annoying. Bad filmmaking. Bad filmmaking. All right, I'm done ranting about that. This is a very cathartic show. I like this show. Yeah. Yeah, I get to just sit and talk and rant about stuff. The. Um... I, fi I finally finished Star Trek The Next Generation. Did you? 
Yes, the entire fucking series. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. Seven seasons. Seven seasons of William Riker and his fantastic acting. <laughs> it was. Um, although I got to say, the last episode is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Because and and the, and it's awesome because Will Riker is the dick face admiral that they are con- that the, the constant foil mm-hmm. throughout the series. He becomes that guy, mm-hmm. and that was pretty awesome. That's cool. Because he's like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't. No, no, you don't realize what you might cause. No, no, no. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but it, you kind of get like a little glimpse of, of what happens to everyone years and years afterwards. It's a ta- yeah. it's a time. D- Picard is like skipping through time. Oh. Not like literally skipping through right. time, but <laughs> oh, I don't know. He, I think he's skipping. That'd be amazing. But he, but he is. Um, Going from, you know, quote unquote, the present in Star Trek mm-hmm. to the future when he's an old man and to the, like the, the very first mission, the Farpoint Station mission. Oh. <clears throat> and he basically, it, it skips back and forth and he realizes that there's an event going on that's, that, that exists in all three timelines and he has to stop it from happening. Yeah. I need water. Was it like his birth or something? Yeah. No, no, no. No, I've got, I'm going to do the bubble. Okay. Oh, water to drink, not water to paint with. Hi, Dale. Yes, um, at least for Jib and I, we're painting minis for our D&D 5E campaign that's on Sunday nights. Uh, Dale asks, hey, what are you painting? Are they for use in your actual play? Um, Stu is painting his minis for his war game that he plays. He has not yet played. Because He's he has done to fucking paint painting. all the minis. I'm painting a lot of... Mechanized British mechanized infantry. Um, it's my druid. Did I tell you the the dramatic difference I noticed? Oh, I don't have my mic on. Uh, when I upgraded from a 720p television to a 1080p television, you were started telling me, yeah. Suddenly, Star Trek: The Next Generation looked like a really, really fucking low budget soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> What war game is it? Rich is asking. Team Yankee, which is, um, oh, who makes it? Battlefront is the name of the company. I think Flames of War is their World War II version of it. And this is the World War III version of it. It's like mid 1980s uh, uh, non nuclear war. Russian T-72s and American M1 Abrams and stuff like that. Right. It's actually a really interesting idea to make a war game like that Mm -hmm. because I don't know if anyone's ever done that. Because when they do war games, they always do historical things. Mm -hmm. Primarily World War II. And all the stuff for World War II is there, but there's all this hardware that got built and never got put into a hot war, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, there's all kinds of equipment that was sitting there on the border German borders for a couple decades. Oh, wow. And so basically this is, the, the game is simulating a hypothetical war between the, the Warsaw Pact and uh, NATO. Neat. You should go paint, Dale. He says he has many, many minis at home, and we're making him want to paint. You should go you paint. You should go paint. Go paint. Just look how many I have to do still. Look, see how many I've done. Look how many I've, I've painted the green on. See? Mm-hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Mm-hmm. I have probably twice that many left. The British have far too many soldiers. <laughs> that is the conclusion I have come to. <laughs> you probably have more soldiers in your bin there than the British actually have. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I got. Uh, maybe is that, that this might constitute the entire British military. <laughs> 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 that's a I feel like that's very. That's a lot. That's a of, lot. That, that is a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I, I bought an American mechanized infantry, mm-hmm. and it's like half this many dudes. Yeah. 
But I don't know if this is like a, maybe this is like a super pack. Like. Oh, maybe. Rich says, did you ever play Twilight 2000? It's an RPG kind of like it. Yep. Yep. Once. Twilight, oh, Twilight 2000, that was by GDW, I think, wasn't it? It was. It was, in fact. Okay, where am I going with this? This way. Okay. So I, I, I started listening to um, uh, World War Z. I bought mm -hmm. the... Have you, do you know World War Z? Yes. Okay. I haven't read it. Max Brooks. Yeah. It's not the movie. Right. Okay. No, I've heard everyone has said that. There are things that happen in the book <clears throat> that happen in the film. Mm. But the, the, like zombies. Well, yes. Um, and but they're very different. And some, there are some other events that, right. that take place. Yeah, there was a lot of jokes when the movie first came out. It was like, well, there are zombies in both the book and the movie. Right. <laughs> There's boats. There's boats in both. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but yeah, there's a lot of people commenting on how about different it. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it would be a, you could make you could turn that into like a mini series. I don't know if you could make it a film. It'd be yeah. have to because they did it. I, I first got the uh, abridged version because I couldn't mm -hmm. find the unabridged version of it. Mm -hmm. so, but the 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 thing about the audiobook is it's. It's read by a bunch of actors because the premise of the book is Max Brooks went out and did a report 12 years after the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. or 12 years after the declaration of victory. Mm -hmm. The war went on much longer than that. Right. But that's when, the, that's when they basically turned the tide. Mm -hmm. right? And so <clears throat> he went out and talked to people all over the world about, about what happened during various stages of the conflict and this and that. And the whole book is a series of interviews and statements from people mm -hmm. about what happened. Mm -hmm. And um, now that's, This is the one you were saying is more like a radio play, right? Well, the book is just written like, I spoke with so-and-so and blah, 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 blah. And let me, let me see if I can find this real quick. Because the... Yeah, while you're looking, um, people... Rich is asking, uh, what about our D&D &D minis, and what are the character bios? Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, so, uh, Amy. There you go. There, there we go. Back, and back up a little uh, bit. He's right here. Yeah, got him. This is uh, Breland of Oladra, who is my cleric. Uh, he's healer, kind of... Uh, uh, heavy frontline fighter sort of guy. Um, he Mainly he's, he's interested in helping people and healing people. Um, this is Zara. Uh, that's Gina's sorceress. And um, I'm, I'm, you're going to have to wait and listen into the show to get a bio because I'm not going to speak for her. <laughs> I, I, I can make up a story if you want. <laughs> and this... Is uh, Ra is Rogar Rob's uh, dragonborn paladin, and again, yeah, have to wait and get that from Rob. <laughs> no, he was raised by a circus circus clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. Okay, that's Rob's bio. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. No, if he's a black dragon, it... why is he green right now? Yeah, because um, this is the underlayer oh, okay. that will provide some shimmer. Oh, for okay. when um, I do when I do the rest of the scales, nice. Because this is a multi-layer process, mm -hmm. and what I do is I lay an underlayer, and then I'll wash over it with black, mm -hmm. and then I'll touch it with opaque black in places and varying shades of of gray nice. in places. Cool. Um, my mini looks like a mess right now, but that's okay. Um, she is an elf druid. Where are you? There we are. Okay. She's an elf druid. This camera doesn't like her very much. Get closer. Get in focus. Move back. I did, but then it... There, just a little bit better. Here, I'll try you in front of this one. Here. Ta-da! No. No. Nope. Didn't like that Nobody one Nobody likes... 
No, no. So we need, we need to have, I think we need to have a like when you're doing this, there should be one camera that's just like pointed down. That we just that put you just in put front stuff of. in we'll front of. Um anyway, she's an elf druid. Her name is Teharisa. Mm -hmm. Here, here. That's a little bit better. Um uh, yeah, I don't think the camera likes the black. Uh, it might, might be. Yeah. It's matching the tablecloth, I think, too much. Um, but yeah, she's an elf druid. And yeah, tune into the show to hear all her backstory. So, World War... The, the, so the audio book, mm -hmm. they went and casted a bunch of actors mm -hmm. to come in... Like you do. To record the voice of each person's statement or interview. Mm -hmm. So Max Brooks reads the introduction and the introductions to each chapter. And then if it's an interview, he asks the questions and whoever, whichever actor is portraying that person plays the... Right. That character. Yeah. And uh, Nathan Fillion, Simon Pegg, oh. Denise Crosby, Bruce Boxleitner, Jerry Ryan, Mark Hamill, Rob Reiner. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. When your dad is Mel Brooks, That's you can true. he he has quite a Rolodex there you can pull out of Martin Scorsese, F. Murray Abraham, Paul Servino, um, uh, what's his name? Henry Rollins is in it. Wow. Alan Alda's in it, and and, and that I listened to the abridged version, and it's only like five hours, oh. which for a novel is short. Super audiobook. short, yeah. And I'm like, okay, that was really. I, I mean, it was good. It was really good, but it was like very unsatisfying because there's like so much of the book. Right. Because I read the book years ago, mm -hmm. before the film came out. Yeah. And and I know there's a lot more in it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I, I went and dug and dug. And someone on the forum said, oh, yeah, there's an unabridged version of it. You just got to really dig for it. And I finally found it. So I got oh, that one. Oh, nice. So I'm reading that now. And, of course, that one's like, I don't know, like 18 hours or something. Oh, so. okay. Because that's where all like, because like none of the creepy stuff. And it's only like this little background thing. And I think it's mentioned in the film mm. about North Korea. North Korea just kind of disappears. Oh, you told me about no one, that. No one knows. The, the people are all gone. No one knows where they went. Yeah. Because <clears throat> they wouldn't ask for help or something, right? Well, yeah. It's a, the country's completely sealed off and yeah. they're, you know, a little paranoid. <laughs> and uh, I think in the movie they talk about the fact that they probably all went down into, into bomb shelters and bunkers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could be down there living their lives until the zombie apocalypse is over, or they could all be zombies yeah. trapped down there. Who knows? But uh, I just read the, or, or just finished the, listen to, the, the chapter, there's a, there's a chapter that, where there's a, um, a woman who was a, what they call a feral, which is um, uh, someone, a, a child who's, Basically, all their, their her support system got killed, but during the apocalypse, mm -hmm. and and now uh, and they they grow up basically completely feral, right? Mm -hmm. And they try when, once they catch these people to reintegrate them back into society. And mm -hmm. she was uh, just old enough where she had some language skills when everyone died, mm -hmm. and so she's able to recount. With the language of about a four or five year old, mm -hmm. what happened when oh, wow. when, the, when the zombies overran the church that she and her mother were staying in? Oh God! But it, it's a woman's voice mm -hmm. speaking with a child's Vernacular? perspective, and it's uh, really disturbing. I'm sure it's really disturbing. And I don't know if that's Denise Crosby. I want, I, I'd love to find out which one that was because it mm -hmm. was like, it, I mean, it like sent chills up your spine. Of course, yeah. <clears throat> but um, it, it's fantastic. That's awesome. Stuff like that makes me wish I had a little bit of a longer commute. Oh, that's that's just great for when I do sewing projects. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it, it is so good. Do, have, do you have an Audible account? Mm -mm. I need to make one. Oh, I, Remind me before you leave. I'll okay. share it with you. Okay. Um, and then you'll get that book for free. Oh, cool. Because if you set up an account, cause if you set up an account, or if you haven't, I think someone you can only be the recipient of one free book. Free book, yeah. And and but it's a good one to have, and and it's definitely rereadable. Awesome.
I'm enjoying it so much. It, I'm enjoying it almost as much as I enjoyed listening to Harry Dresden novels. We just finished the Not first one of those while we were out of town. Oh, did you? Yeah. What'd you think? And the first one, the first couple, I think it's slow going at first. Um, it, it it's his freshman novel. You can tell. Yeah. But, um, but it's a fun read. Yes. Um, That's um, Stormfront. Stormfront. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's with what's her name? Um, oh, I can't remember the character's name. Which the, the the woman who comes asking for help? Monica sells. Monica sells. She shows up again at some point. That does not shock me. Yeah. Um, Vic Shade on the uh, in the chat room says, "I see Stu has a palette going on." What brand are you guys using, and how well do they coat? How good is the color coverage? I love the way game workshop paints go on, like silk, but the price is outrageous. Uh, I, I don't paint enough to actually have an opinion about how well the paints go on, but these are the paints that, that are made by for, either by or for Battlefront. They're, well, I, Battlefront's name is on them, but they're the, the Team Yankee paints, which is the... Flames of War paints. And I have no idea. They seem to go on... I, I don't have to put several coats. I'll, they cover in one. <clears throat> but I'm also painting little tiny miniatures. And I've... I've one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm nine miniatures away from when I last gave a fuck. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh. I use a combination of Citadels, uh, P3s, and um, a brand called Game Extra Opaque, um, which I forget where I found those. Um, but uh, I use I like P3s because they flow really well. Is um, P3 a brand or is that like a uh, P3 number? is a brand. Okay, it's Formula P3, um, and Citadel has. Um, some great, really great colors, and I like their washes. Um, but with their colors, I recommend using a little bit of flow extender to get the paint to flow a little better. I um, f finally figured out how to how to make my airbrush work right. That's good. That took a long oh, ass yeah. time. Because that tanks, you really got to airbrush those. Mm -hmm. You can't. You yeah. Can't really paint them with a brush. And uh, <clears throat> it was not water, and it was not distilled water, but it was, I, I went and bought an acrylic thinner. Uh-huh. Um, and it was hard to find. Really? Yeah, because it, it had, there was little tiny bottles of it at Game Empire, and I bought those, and I used those, and it worked great. I'm like, oh, why can't I find it on Amazon? I finally found it. <clears throat> but um, I do like a 25% like a thinner. Mm-hmm. And then seventy five percent paint, and that thins it up enough to get a nice spray pattern out of the, out of the thing. You'll have to show me how to do that on another stream. It's not hard. I have an airbrusher, but I have never used it. It's not hard. the The big thing is cleaning it. You have to clean that. it really yeah. thoroughly, and yeah. you have to take it apart and run brushes through it because, especially with acrylic paints, mm -hmm. it gets little bits of little paint boogers yeah. inside of the thing, and then pretty soon. You have no aperture, and you're uh, getting nothing out. Yeah. That makes sense. Acrylic paint is, well, it's plastic, so it's very gummy. I was, you know, the Renaissance Fair starts in three days. Yeah. And I was building boxes to put batteries in, because we have a PA system out there that we have That you use, hide in boxes. And we can't plug into power even though it's right there, so we have to and buy power inverters and chargers and a, a lot of sealed lead acid batteries, and I made boxes to put them in, and I glued the boxes together as I was screwing them together with Gorilla Glue. You know Gorilla Glue? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gorilla Glue doesn't fucking come off your hands. Mm -hmm. Nope. Even with goddamn acetone, it doesn't come off. Nope. Right. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to use. Eventually, if you put lotion in your hands enough, you'll get off the layers I ended up, of skin. It was, well, it was bugging me. <laughs> yeah. 
it was bugging me because I'm trying to play bazooki with it on, right. and not only does it stick to you and not go away, it remains sticky. Yeah. Oh. Which makes it really hard to play. Oh, I've never had it remain sticky, usually. This stuff remains sticky. Oh. So I, I ended up soaking my hands in water and soap, and then soaping them up, and then soaking them in water. Mm -hmm. It's like... And and then I had a, a nail brush, and I just started scrubbing and soaking and scrubbing. And, mm -hmm. so, and I eventually got it all off, but mm -hmm. like, God, it was awful. Yeah. I don't know what you're supposed to thin that stuff with, but... Um, Children's Rich, Tears. Yeah. <laughs> Rich in the chat room says, which Ren Fair do you guys frequent? Uh, the the uh, Renaissance Pleasure Fair... Uh, which is now now in Irwindale, California. It used to be in Devore, mm -hmm. and before that, it was in Agura. Yeah. So many of our crew are actually we are employees and performers there, in musical bands. Yep. If you ever watch the our weekly podcast at the end of the podcast on Friday nights, we play a song, generally from either the Poxy Boggards or the Merry Wives of Windsor, and once in a while, a band called Supportive Tricks. Which and, and and Celtic Squall, which no longer exists. Squall. Yeah. That's what I was going to But should. Keep but, plug them. But may, but may one day again. Who knows? You never know. That's true. If I can ever convince you to start a band again, another one. Yeah. If I'm <laughs> going to start another band, I want to start another band with my kids. Yeah, that's a good plan. They're almost to the point where they can start. They could, they could definitely both sing. Mm -hmm. But I don't quite have them on the instruments yet. But they're both taking piano. And if I buy like a little toy piano or something like that, I could take it out there, mm -hmm. you know, distress it so it looks old timey. Yeah. Oh, Rich says I know the Poxy Boggarts. Well, do you? <laughs> that's awesome because uh, Stu is the director and started that band. Yep. I don't know if Rich is being like sarcastic because he listens all the time and already knows that, or. <laughs> That is my band. That is your band. And we have a new we have a new performer this year named Ian. Yes, he got in the band last year but wasn't able to pretend. Oh, he's been uh, he's been a Bristol Rennie for years. He's oh, just, so he's probably he's heard of us. Yeah, and he's heard a bunch of other bands performing your songs. Hey, really? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Where are my royalties? Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm very works. curious about this. Who, what are the, what songs are they performing, and no, which groups? I, I would made like that to joke. Know. He oh. didn't say that. I <laughs> made that joke because there were, there have been times where we've gone to other Ren fairs and heard people singing songs from Southern. Uh, Golden Brand Acrylic Glazing Compound. Eight dollars for a huge bottle of Lush Forever. Restores old paint like a dream. Oh. Is it thin? Because I noticed that there were some, um, there were some. Stuff that I got, but it was thick, hmm. almost as thick as the paint. And I'm like, that's not going to help. Maybe it, it will. needs no, no. It needs to be more watery. In the, I don't maybe know. Maybe that stuff is not meant to thin the paint, but maybe thin the color of like the, how how opaque it is. That's probably what it was. Yeah, that's probably what it was. It's more of a diluter. Yes. There you go. Oh, it makes the paint into a glaze if you add too much. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it would be. It would make it into a glaze if it's diluted, right. yeah. What is this? Uh, it's flow extender. Okay. That's it. He said it looks like white glue, and that's this stuff right here. It looks like white glue. Mm -hmm. Formula P3. It's, it's to, almost 10 o'clock, which probably Yeah, we should probably start winding down. He says he's been to TRF and Scarby, too. Texas Renaissance Fair and Scarborough. Yeah. Um, so he knows who Dead Bob is. Mm-hmm. Probably. I'm going to guess. Uh, he might, so, might also know who Sound and Fury is. Low extender sounds like something you take for an enlarged prostate. It does, Dale, yes. That's exactly and if it what lasts it like. for longer than three hours, consult a <laughs> physician. <laughs> um, i trying to think who are the other circuit acts that we know. The washing well wenches, they the, probably Yeah, the washing the, wenches, those for other, sure, there. Um, the mud show, I don't know. I think they're still around. Maybe. They don't do Southern anymore, though, right? 
No, the Mud Show is to, no longer does something. Yeah, well, there was a love hate relationship between yeah. the Mud Show and California Renaissance Fairs. Um, but really, as far as I know, it had nothing to do with the Mud Show and everything to do with the Mountain Sonic. No, no, no. Not um, that I want to talk about that kind no, of thing. No, we're not going to talk about that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Get all the Ren Fair gossip right here. Um, uh, Vic Shade asked if I do Renaissance Fairs anymore. I'm on a hiatus. No, you're not. You got a pass. You got a pass waiting for there. you. Yes, I work there. Technically, I, I do. <laughs> um, but I'm not in the Merry Wives currently. Um, although they still perform a bunch of the songs that I wrote, and they're still awesome, and I still show up and crash their party every once in a while and sing with them. Because it's super fun. Yeah, the Washing Wall Wenches, they perform it. Um, well, there's, there's different groups of them, too. Yeah, they're all one group or one company, but then they have different, like... That's like the, the Mud troops. Show does the same thing. I yeah. Think. I, think, I don't think Dead Bob... I met, I met the guy that plays Dead Bob. He was a very nice guy. Yeah? Yeah. I met him backstage because he was only... He's only been out, he was out here, not last year, but the year before, I think. Mm -hmm. And we shared a stage with him. And he was on oh. either just before or just after us. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I sat and watched his show, and it's it's very funny. Usually they are. Most circuit acts are pretty good. Hey, audience. Hey, what? <clears throat> but uh, this Saturday, the fair begins, mm -hmm. and it will go on for seven weekends. Yep. A long time. And I think I know where all of my costume pieces are. That's good. You're ahead oh, of the game. Oh, it's past 10. We should probably. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, do we know Serena, a music trio? Serena. Sirena? Oh, Serena. Oh, yeah. We met them at the Bristol Renaissance Fair. Um, the Mary Wives of Windsor, my group, has performed a number of times there. And, uh, yeah, we met them, we showed a stage with them at Bristol a number of years ago. They are amazing. They're really good singers. And they, have, they get to not wear bodices, which is really cool. They have, like, cool body paint, and they look like sirens. They sing amazing. And there's three of them, if it's the group. They just wear, like, chemises with no bodices? No, no, like no, the they have, like, or? the nymph kind of, like, <laughs> oh. like fishnet, mermaidy thing going. They look really? cool. And they sound really awesome. And so I just sat there going, "Why am I in a bodice?" Why see, they have, yeah, they have. Our Renaissance Fair has 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 very strict rules about costuming. Yeah. Um, and and has it, it's it's literally ingrained in the culture of the fair. Yeah. And and that's why I have that like, what they wear that? I'm, <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely, a hundred percent. That's the same same reaction when I go to a small fair and there's yeah. uh, a Klingon camp. Yeah. It's like, what, what, what is this? <laughs> that is not a Frieder approved yeah. outfit. That Batleth is not period. Yeah, but it also makes it so you can go to any Ren Fair and you can look at someone and be like, "You work at Southern too, right?" You know exactly. They <laughs> you, have like, yeah, it's like, yes, yes, plain colors. Yeah, that happened actually at the. Uh, I was at a comic book convention this last weekend, and for whatever reason, there was a bunch of pirate guys who were all out front after dark after the convention was over, and I was like, "Oh, they work at Southern. Hey, you guys work at Southern, huh?" And they're like, "Yeah, how'd you know?" It's like. Well, there's this, this, this. You're wearing socks. You're that is a costume that would have been approved by Frida. <laughs> yes, exactly. May God rest on her soul. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, they started out as Fantasticals. Oh, okay. All right. We have Fantasticals out here because yeah. Bristol oh. owns owns Southern California Renaissance Fair. Yeah, but most of our Fantasticals don't talk. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that that... Or the company that owns Bristol also oh, owns Southern yeah, Cal so. California Renaissance Fair. All right. So I think we're ending for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys have... Suggestions, or you think it's cool, but you th certain things are, could be better. Let us know. This is something we're kind of messing with again. Um, if you haven't subscribed, to, if this is your first time watching us, um, we have our roundtable discussion podcast, which is on Friday nights at eight p.m. Right? Still at eight? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Eight p.m. Um, Sunday nights we have D and D five E that's happening for the next few weeks. Monday we rotate between a, a masks campaign and a, um, a Savage Worlds Rifts campaign. So every other Monday. So check out happyjacks.org slash schedule and you'll see all the games and stuff we play. Or if you're from England, happyjacks.org slash schedule. Schedule. I'm never going to say that. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, and... Don't end the stream. No, we're not. I'm just switching, but we're going to leave you with a thing. Uh...